Wow. Alright guys, thanks for coming. Welcome to the CU Hacking Club meeting. I assume that's why you're all here. Um, tonight we're actually going to have these guys present instead of me because I'm tired of presenting. Harold's not around tonight because he's out interviewing in Boston, so it's just me. We're going to have them go over. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we had a team in the CCDC, the Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition, this last weekend, and they got second place, so congratulations to them. They're going to be presenting tonight kind of on what the competition involved, what they had to do, and for any of you who might be interested in being on the team next year, take note, because this will be the list of things that you should do for next year's competition as well. So. We'll, uh, I'll come back up and talk for a few minutes at the end of the meeting. A few items of business. We need to decide who wants to present next or more importantly, kind of what we want to do for the rest of the semester because we're almost at spring break here and then things wrap up pretty quickly. So if anyone has topics that they would either like to present or that they would like to see presented, think about it now. We'll bring it up again at the end of the meeting and come up with what we want to do next. We could conceivably meet one more time. It would be that week before spring break. Otherwise, we probably won't meet until after spring break. So uh, think about that. And with that, I will hand this over to these guys. Uh, yeah. All right. So yeah, we were at the Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition. This is the guide. I don't know. Basically, what it is is yeah, there's like there were eight teams, each one from different universities, and we were all given a network of computers and a switch and a firewall and then remote servers. And we had to secure them basically from a penetration testing like firm, like professional hackers who would try to get into our system and, and while completing tasks given to us by the like competition organizers. These are called injects. Basically they're anything from like set up an FTP user on the web server to like write a uh, physical security policy for the company. Yeah. Um, to them. Eight of them. A eight policy, eight. Seven, to be exact. Yeah. <laughs> Richard wrote all of them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know. So the way it's scored at least, I guess, how you win, because that's what everyone cares about in competition, is um, you keep your services up. So we have a web server, an FTP server, a database server, a uh, mail server, AD, an Active Directory slash DNS server, and we had some like I said that, but we had some we had some like tool servers like a Splunk server, which is a security tool, which is awesome. Uh, what was the other <laughs> server we had? A Snort. Snort server, which is another tool that you use for security. But yeah, the main services we had to keep up were just the web server, the FTP server, the mail, the mail server, and SSH into the web server as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then one more. There were five. Uh, there's HTTPS. Yeah, right. And also. HTTPS. And that's stitched in both of those. So yeah. So yeah, that's how you win. So you just do those <laughs> and then you um, you keep, you secure yourself from the red team or you lose points from however they break your services. Since if your services are down, you're not getting points for them. Which they did pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, like Skyler said, this is a defense competition, so most of it was, uh, like, they give you a ser servers or services that are set up incorrectly, so there's something wrong with the configuration, or they just haven't been configured at all. And then they give you the injects, which tell you you need to set this up, you need to configure this. And uh, I think one of the most difficult things was, like, you get an inject that says set up SSH on this server, and you're like, okay, SSH is up. And then you don't think about all the security openings that you have. So you just put it up and it's not configured correctly. And then the red team just gets in and pwns you directly. So one of the ma major um, exploits they had was on the web server, there was a user database running on a MySQL server. And the actual servers were secure, but the backups weren't. So they were getting in through the backups, getting everybody's password, and then logging in that way. And uh, basically honing everybody. So it's pretty cool. Um, I'm just going to talk about a little bit of my experience. I worked with the Active Directories, which is a Windows, yeah, it's basically <laughs> Windows overdosage of security. And the main goal for Active Directories is you want to have everything centralized and then the security po uh, policies will propagate out to all the other, uh, they're called force and domains and stuff like that. But the basic idea is you can set these policies on one central computer 
and then they'll propagate out to, all, to everything else that you want them to. Um, the main things that we had to do is, so Active Directory keeps track of users and computers, which you can set up different policies for. And the Active Directory actually came set up, and our goal was to secure it from old users. So the pretense of the competition was there was a natural disaster, and this company's headquarters got knocked out, so they relocated temporarily, and we were the IT team that was supposed to get everything back up and running. Well, no, they had a recovery team come and get everything back up and running in like a bare bones form, and we were the IT people meant to secure everything and make sure it's all working correctly yeah. and stuff like that. So when we when I got into the Active Directory, there's a bunch of old users from uh, you know previous iterations of their company, and they'd all been fired. So the first thing to do was to go through and deny access to all those users. Um, after that, we got an inject that was to set up a WSUS server, which is Windows Services <laughs> Update Server. And this thing is a freaking nightmare. It's such a hassle. So that took me like a whole day to get set up. Basically, um, yeah. When you set, when you guys click like Windows Update on your Windows machine, that's what's connecting to. It's connecting to the main Windows WSUS server. Uh, for the competition, there was an internal one that they had us link up to, and uh, yeah, it's brutal to get set up. Um, apparently, if you guys know Active Directories really well, you can make a lot of money, so it's something to look into. I give Brian two dollars for setting yes, it up. Yes, I already made my first profit off of it. Uh, <laughs> the first day it wasn't working, yeah. and the second day it wasn't working, so I was like, if you still have this, I'll give you a dollar. And then yes. like two hours later, so it wasn't done, I'm like, alright, I'm sweetening the pot, and then he got two dollars. Four hours you were before the so hard for that money. Yeah. Four hours before the competition. <laughs> Took everybody out for drinks everything. with the two dollars. It was money. And they didn't even attack that server. It was no, like they didn't. Part. Well, <laughs> and like four hours before, and then the updates took like two hours anyway. So yeah, really there was like ninety-eight updates. updates. Like the last two hours of the competition. Yeah. <laughs> um, the last thing I had to do with the active directories, well, there was two things actually. The first one was put in user banners. So I don't know if you guys have ever logged into a machine and it says like. Welcome to such and such a machine. These are our IT policies. Like, this isn't your computer. Don't download stuff on it. Don't upload stuff from it. Stuff like that. I had to put a uh, user policy banner, which was pretty basic actually. And then the last thing that we did. So we thought at the end we were pretty much done with everything. We were just kind of staying around, and we got an inject the day before um, to change the SMTP banner, and so. When you guys log into an SMTP server, it says like, hello, this is, uh, we were running, I forget the server, but it gives you like all the, all the uh, information about the server. So it'll say like, this is the mail server name, this is the version we're running, this is the time and date, stuff like that. So having these accessible to the public allows hackers to get information so they can just run known exploits on it. So we went back and we tried to change the banner. And uh, there's a couple ways to do it. The first way was to change some registry keys, which is a pain also, as most things are on Windows. And then um, the second way was some roundabout, like you go into the separate console for SMTP specifically, and then you have to change some stuff in there. So. Uh, yeah, overall, Active Directories is a pain in the ass. Yes. So, so just to give you an idea why <laughs> we were so surprised they didn't hack into the DNS server, which is what we updated. Yeah. This is Nessus is one of the programs we were running to secure our system. Tony set it up. It um basically what it does is it scans all the computers on your network for any known. Is it just Metasploit vulnerabilities or is it any vulnerabilities? It's just known. No vulnerabilities. Really anything that's in the Nessus database. Okay, so any vulnerabilities it knows about. So the initial scan came up. So critical vulnerabilities are ones that allow remote code execution, which means basically you can execute any code on the machine. And there's four of them in like three different types of services. One in uh, NetBIOS, SMB, one in DNS, and one in the TCP IP services that were running on that machine. So they could have gotten into that machine super easily, but I guess they didn't. They were apparently really nice about stuff the first day. They didn't even like hack into any people's machines. They just gathered information. And then the second day, they really didn't do anything until the middle of the day when they started like denial of service attacking our machines and making tons of connections 
and trying to pull them offline. I'm deleting our. Uh, oh yeah, you and deleting our database, like and clearing our database, but we had a backup, so it didn't matter. Um, yeah, that's one of the things Brent did. He's the only one who's not here, but he's uh, Mike busy. Is busy. Oh yeah, Mike's not here either. But anyway, Tony, do you want to talk? Since that kind of relates to what you did. <laughs> you talk about IP tables, your favorite program. Uh, yeah, so most of what I did was um, on the first day I was just sort of responding to index, um, just whatever like, seemed useful for me to do. And then um, on the second day I was really focusing on, uh, on trying to secure the servers. So, me and Brent were kind of doing the same thing, which was just going through the servers, uh, running um, a command called lsof, which lists, lists the open files. And we were giving it some arguments like uh, minus i for internet and minus um, n for no DNS resolution. And uh, there's another option. Minus copy. Yeah. Um, I don't remember what that does. does. Uh, port. Uh, oh, yeah. It doesn't result. It, it causes it not to display services, the service names, and instead display the actual port number. Um, so I started off by doing that to see like what, um, to see what services were actually running on our machines to figure out like what could be a potential vulnerability. And so we found a lot of um, remote procedure call stuff running um, and some uh, MySQL servers running uh, on the public interface so that anyone can connect to them. So we changed MySQL to actually only run um, on the local interface and uh, turned off the remote procedure call stuff. And other than that, I think I was mostly just monitoring. I, at one point, I did find a Java interpreter shell running and immediately killed that. Um, I think the way that they got that on their machine was um, somehow they got not the password to one of our admin um, accounts, which we were using to administrate, but um, they somehow got the credentials for like one of the user accounts, which we created as an object. So I don't know, do you have any guesses on how they got that? I mean, it could have just been like, they could have just hold them. <laughs> I kind of doubt that. I kind of do too. So, I, but yeah, I really actually, that's one of the things that I've left being kind of curious about. Because um, they definitely logged in as that user through SSH, so I'm not sure. And the password is really secure, so yeah. there's no way they could reinforce it. Like I think they mentioned at one point they were using FTP to get credentials. So maybe since the user was logging into FTP, which is like um, over there, maybe they had gotten some sort of um, some some access to some other system that they could sniff on. Right. Um, anyway, well, I guess one thing about the competition is that it was really formal setup, so we had to like keep documentation of everything we did. So these are like change logs of every change we made to the machines. We were kind of lazy on this. This isn't really every change we made, but it's a lot of changes. So at machine, this is the user we added for the inject, and that's also the user that ha that was we caught hacking into the machine. So I don't know. Um, but yeah, so we just had to keep change logs. Whenever we like submit, whenever something happened to our machines in order to remove users, in order to change passwords, we had to submit like official uh, statements asking the organizers if we could do that. So it would be like, and we had to like wait 15 minutes to change passwords if we asked them if we could. We had to, um, yeah, it was just really formal. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It was an interesting thing because they were like super holding up the illusion that it was a real company. So. Yeah, we didn't get paid at all. We didn't get paid though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Except for Brian. <laughs> um, so, uh, so one interesting thing that I guess we haven't really mentioned yet <clears throat> that was that basically we showed up in the room and it was like a complete clusterfuck. Well, it was just <laughs> absolutely awful. They gave us all the wrong IP range. Uh, we didn't know the IP for our firewall, our DNS server, or really anything. 
This wasn't and, on uh, purpose, by the way. Yeah, this was, yeah, this was not on purpose. Uh, but basically, I spent pretty much the first like hour or so just mapping out the network and just scanning everything I could to try to find like you know whatever computers we were using. And so uh, I think we definitely hammered a couple of the uh, what was it the NASA team or maybe the Air Force team with like a ton of scan traffic, just because we didn't know what our IP range was. But uh, but anyway, so we eventually we eventually figured out our uh, our range. And uh, so one, once we had uh, everything mapped out, then uh, we had that. But the firewall actually was not in our IP range, so we had to find that as well. Um, and then a bunch of us tried logging into the firewall to change settings, but none of us knew iOS. And so we decided to just leave it be, because we heard after the first day that a ton of teams went into their firewall and changed settings and then got it shut down and basically lost tons of points. And so, I, I don't know, like that was actually a pretty positive thing, the fact that none of us actually knew iOS. Well, uh, apparently the main way they got into a lot of machines was that the firewall wasn't filtering on IPv6. So that actually was a vulnerability yeah. that we didn't look into, but I guess... Yeah, that was the other thing is that for how much uh, awesome IP tables hacking that Tony uh, was doing, uh, we never actually touched IPv6 in any way. Yeah. And so that that's definitely something to look out for next year. Um, definitely, yeah. And the other thing that the red team mentioned that was really huge was uh, Drupal vulnerabilities. We didn't have anyone that knew anything about like Drupal or really PHP in a deep way. And that was like basically the way that they just got in and just destroyed everyone. And uh, I mean, they were just creating users and randomly changing them to admins at will and just screwing with our databases. Um, although one, one interesting thing is that we had a secure FTP server because we ever, never actually got it working. <laughs> uh, we couldn't upload any files. We might have lost some points there, but they also couldn't break in that way. So right. that was actually pretty nice. Because one of the injects was make sure your FTP server downloads and uploads and under an anonymous yeah. user, yeah. and it, it didn't. <laughs> and we just yeah. never fixed it because we couldn't figure out. Brett spent like three hours. Brett is super good at like stuff. So yeah. like, <laughs> we couldn't figure out with him. He spent like three hours doing it and it never worked. Yeah. So and then uh, and I guess another difficulty that we ran into was that uh, all of the Linux servers were running CentOS, which is an open source version of Red Hat, and none of us have used Red Hat really. And they don't like it doesn't use Aptitude or anything, so we had to use Yum, which is uh, like strange to say the least. Um, and so that was interesting configuring those servers as well. But uh, yeah, the Windows would have definitely been the hardest for sure. So yeah. I don't know. Alright, so I guess we mentioned policies earlier. Richard wrote all of them. I'll show you some of them just so you can see. So we had at least eight injects where we were just supposed to write down policies. So let's see. Here's oops, that's a hidden file. Um, so like here's one on email security. And uh print up for these as well. Right. It's a nice long policy. This was probably the shortest. All right, fine, Andy. You want you want something better? You want something better? Hold on. Which one is really long? Um, not sure. Actually, there there was longest was like a page and a half, so not too long. Yeah. Passwords. Oh. Keep it short and sweet, Andy. Concise. You didn't see what the Air Force team was turning in. <laughs> they had like an appendix to all of theirs. Yeah, they were like ten page documents. So here's here's like physical security, which I think was probably the one we knew the least about. Maybe. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's kind of <laughs> sort of obvious, I guess. Yeah. At least we ended up repeating stuff a ton in our policies, too. Yeah. So they wanted, because you're basically a company that's just relocated, um, all of your um, regular policies have gone, disappeared, and apparently all the employees have shared kind of short term memory or something. So they wanted you to write up all these policies about um, how to act, so how to create passwords that are secure. Um, the very first one we got was like whether or not you should be allowed to use social networking sites, what the vulnerabilities there might be. Um, the physical security one, uh, one about email policy, um, and so on and so forth. And yeah, a lot of them were sort of redundant. So like creating a good password is um, you know, useful whether you're talking about servers or your email password or your regular password or what have you. Um, and, and then there was one like they were moving to a new location. So um, they wanted to know what sort of measures that should they take there. And that overlapped with the physical um, security one a lot. Um, it's kind of hard to tell without actually getting the breakdown of what we lost points on and not points on. But I kind of think um, a good thing with this policy uh, is to not take anything for granted. Um, really just to spell everything out because like, I guess it would be worse to get points docked off for you know, being too long um, revokes and to actually miss stuff that you think is obvious but might not actually be um, quite so clear. And so yeah, we got a lot of those policies 
and um, apparently index as a whole worth 50% um, of the uh, score. So having a person or two to just be able to sit down and write them was actually fairly useful. Um, because apparently we were pretty good with paper uh, with paperwork compared to some of the other things. And, uh, and turning them out on time. Yeah. That was really important. Um, so that was definitely um, an important thing. And uh, since Mike's not here, I guess I'll talk about what he did as well. He spent most of his time, at least the second day, um, looking at SNORT and Splunk, which are two network analysis tools that we uh, had service for. Let's see what you did with this. Splunk in particular was uh, pretty cool. It's like basically Wireshark, but for all the servers. Uh, the NSA guy that was in uh, with us, you know, white team, yeah, babysitter, um, was basically, uh, he said it was probably system logs that were getting reported uh, from all the servers to this program. But um, yeah, it was really detailed and let you see exactly what was going on, what IP addresses. Yeah, it was really cool. But yeah, it's, it's just like you can choose IPs for machines in your network and, and then it lists the list all the activity on those machines. Yeah, and so for example, when we were getting DDoS, it would show exactly uh, what IP was DDoSing us and how many times they tried it. And uh, as it was happening in real time, you know. Right. And, and like, it, since it got the system logs directly, it could even say like exactly what commands being typed in and stuff. Yeah. So like one time Brent was like doing some like I think it was the Yum update. <laughs> yeah. Doing Yum update and like getting mod security and we were like, oh god, GCC. some guy's trying to like or he was getting GCC so we're like, oh god, someone's trying to compile exploit code on our machine. And Brent was like, wait, what? What were you guys saying? We're like someone's trying to compile exploit code. He's like, oh you mean me? And we were like, oh. So yeah. Because yeah. like it just shows exactly what people are typing every single command they run on every single machine that it's set up for. So it's a pretty cool program. And, uh, so do you have to like configure all of your client machines to communicate with They set it up for us. So yeah, this is the other thing. The Snort server and the Splunk server were both already set up and working completely for and us. Weren't attacked. Although they didn't tell us where they were. So that was one of the, they never gave us the IPs for those. They expect us to find them, yeah, which is really unrealistic. Because like in a real company they would know where their security servers were running. <laughs> but yeah. Um, um, one thing I'd like to note is that they didn't really try any social engineering hacking at all, well, really. Yeah, they Except, yeah. well, but like they didn't, a little bit. No physical social engineering yeah. because they said it wasn't allowed. Yeah. Although, there was that yeah, there. There. So, yeah, there's a story about that. Yeah, there was on, on the forum, uh, there was, also we had like the company's Maestro Game website that had like a shopping car and uh, a forum that people post questions about the games they were buying and whatever. And so there was one uh, forum post that was like, um, hey guys, I was trying to install this game and I can't get it to work. Help! Uh, here's a PDF with steps I followed. And then at the very well, I'm like, uh, note, this is an inject. Please do this. And so you open the PDF and it downloads a .mod file. And so that's your first indication that something's entirely wrong. <laughs> um, and so um, we open the .mod file in a text editor, a text editor, because we're on Macs. And that was another thing. We have Windows and Mac machines, so we're stationary. Yeah. Um, and so the um, dot .mod file was actually a Perl keylogger that would have sent everything. Yeah, to just the opened the socket and sent all your keystrokes. All, all your uh, socket. Well, the system in. Uh, so yeah. yeah, yeah. Straight to uh, web team. And I don't think any of the teams fell for it, but it was kind of funny. No, there was one team fell for it. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, so <laughs> one, 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 team, uh, one team fell for it. And um, I think they could have been a lot worse about uh, that social engineering. Uh, I know me and uh, Jerome were looking at uh, some blog from like two years ago um, about one of the competitions and for whatever reason all the teams were like outside in the open and so the red team was able to just walk amongst them and like slip a USB into their computers when nobody was looking and do stuff like that. <coughs> um, so I think for the next year, even though it didn't happen too much this, this time, uh, we should be on the lookout for that. Um, Landon, I thought one more thing you could talk about, which is the port zero inject. I thought that was probably the most interesting inject we got oh, yeah. the composition. I think you wrote it, so. <clears throat> yeah, that's right. Um, so yeah, so they, the inject was basically something like the boss 
So all the, all the injects were written like they were written by management, so basically stupidly worded, essentially. <laughs> and so this one was like, oh, I heard on the internet that hackers can open up like a, like a port, or like, you know, on port zero, and like hack port zero. I want you to look into this and like tell me whether there's an actual vulnerability here. And uh, yeah, and basically it was just, you know, that he had to write back to be like, no, you don't have to worry. Port zero doesn't actually exist. If you ever create something bound to port zero, that just means the operating system gives you any port at all. Just some ephemeral port, and so uh, a lot, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the injects were like this, where you basically just like, yeah, this is like, it was like a knowledge test, like a trivia question, and uh, and so yeah, so, so yeah, I, I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> basically, that you know, port zero is just impossible. It's it, like it doesn't exist. Uh, and so yeah, I don't know. I, I can't remember any of the other ones that were funny like that. Where that was basically like one, trivia funny. question. Like, right. What's the answer to this? Well, the uh, social media one was kind of stupid. It's like, my, f uh, my friend's son got hacked from his Facebook account. Can this happen to us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah they're all worded quite interestingly. Yeah. 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 Like, I guess I'll talk now because I did stuff related to that, Andy. How frequently were you guys getting injects? And um, what was so the timeline? The on? first day yeah, in the morning, we started, like, in the, after a couple hours, we started getting, like, almost every hour, we'd get, like, three. And then that we're doing yeah. either like an hour later, 30 minutes later, or two hours later. Yeah, I mean, they'd, they'd be staggered. Sometimes we get like three at once, and then one would be doing an hour, one an hour and a half, and two hours. Right. Or, you know, or we'd get like minutes. one random one that's doing 15 minutes, or we'd get yeah. none for like four hours. Like the last yeah. day, we got none for like four hours yeah. from like one, one to after, four, yeah. one to yeah. five. Although, I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that a lot of the time they were just getting their asses handed to them. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, we, they like kept uh, delaying due dates. Yeah, so so interestingly, at the end of the the second half of the second day, they put up a website where you could monitor your own oh. score. Which was and, cool. and you know, and coincidentally, since you know, you just you could just t change the URL slightly, you could also see everyone else's score as well. And so we were able to compare how we were doing to everyone else. And basically, we were like it was us and Air Force. We were the only two teams that had all of our services running, and everyone else was had at least one service down. Team and G had all. Yeah, yeah, there was yeah, there was one team that had all of them down for like two hours or something, and that was just terrible. And then one of them had FTP down for like four or five hours, and I think that was one of the teams that the red team was talking about, where they filled up their hard drive, and oh, then yeah. Uh, yeah, that was the best exploit ever. Uh, by the way, that was incredible. What they did is they used like FTP or something or a interpreter or something, and basically they were just writing random files into the hard drive, and they completely filled up the hard drive and then fork bonded. And so then it had to restart. And whenever a computer restarts, you have to write to the syslogs. But since there's no room in the hard drive, the computer can't restart. And so it's just stuck in the state of limbo, of never being able to run. And since it's a virtual machine, it's also completely hammering the CPU, which then disables all the other virtual machines on that physical machine. And so basically, it just got completely destroyed. And it was hilarious. It was funny. Yeah, because like, the fact that there are virtual machines means the red team had to be really nice about stuff. Because like, if you get into a virtual machine, you can just shut it down, and then you're screwed. Because you don't have physical access to the machine, so you can't turn it back on. We were able to ask them to turn stuff on because Brian was like accidentally shut down one of our machines at some point, and I had to like. So I was the, the captain, which meant I interacted with the like people running the competition, um, which I guess was a really interesting thing as well because they were treating it super formally, and it was really hard to keep things take things seriously. But they were like being intentionally like like stern with me. And I was like, are you joking me right now? So, um, and they'd be like, yeah, so you need to rewrite this because we need to know more detail. And I was like, can I just tell you more detail? He's like, no, it needs to be written. And um, the first day it was extremely disorganized because yeah. like, the internet went down. they had like a secret room where all the black team, which was like the administrative people were hanging out. And like, they didn't tell the captains anywhere to go or how to like deal with that. So I just like randomly roamed the halls and then stood outside that room until someone saw me. They came outside, they were like, what do you want? I'm like, can I talk to the CEO? Because I have a question. And they're like, okay, then they go in for like three minutes, come back out with the CEO, or come back out and say, he's busy, come back later. I'm like, well, I actually need to talk to him. We had a question about the competition, then they're like, oh, you mean that? And then they go back in, then they come back, and it was just frustrating. So um, the second day they got more organized, they had someone out there who would take stuff into that room and get answers for me, so that was better. But yeah, it was just interesting having to deal with them and having to like live in this mock world where this company was real, even though I knew it wasn't in any way. <laughs> um, what, Rich? So uh, you said that they filled the dude's hard drive up with files, oh. but didn't you say also say that you were required to have like an anonymous user so that they could just like do that? Like, how do you protect against that? If you're well, you can to that? you can uh, put limitations on folders and users. 
So the user that's, that you log into as an anonymous user on FTP has, right, it's, it's its own user called like FTP anonymous or something. So yeah. that's who you log in as. And you can, you can put quotas on that user, like <coughs> this user is only allowed to use, you know, one gig of actual disk space. Okay. Our like didn't work at all, so we didn't have to worry about and that. And also, the uh, anonymous uh, FTP user can't fork bond either. Um, and so that was the other key that we actually never implemented. We never implemented U-Limit on any of the users. Yeah. That would have been a good idea. Yeah, you, uh, so you that can put quotas on like, well. the amount of processes, the amount of disk space, right. so only the amount of memory. Yeah. We did IP tables rules to limit amount of connections, but we never limited individual user processes. Yeah. So yeah, anyway. Oh yeah, yeah, we got DDoS too. You want to talk about that? That was yeah. interesting. <laughs> yeah, so we were just like working on our server and then suddenly like our services just our server just like froze and went down. And this was like the first time it happened. Actually the first thing they did was our server went to like a, this server's under maintenance uh, oh, yeah. page and like we like tried to get it up, it looked fine, everything seemed normal, and we were like, what the heck? And then Brent and I Googled like Drupal maintenance page, and apparently there's an option you can set in Drupal to make that page just show up. So they'd hacked into one of the admin accounts on the forum and had changed that option. So Brent and I went and manually changed it in the database, and that fixed that one. So, so what the option does is it makes it so that anybody connecting from an outside machine sees your maintenance page, like this site is down for maintenance. But if you're logging in on the local machine as an administrator, it shows the actual page. So like you're, we're logging in as admin and everything looks fine. And then you try to log in from an outside page to the exact same, or an outside machine to the exact same page. And it says, you know, the site's down for maintenance. Right. So it's like, what's going so on? Right. So we were like, so that was like a clue that something was about to happen, basically. So then they started like seriously like denial of service attacking our machines. So we would like, Tony was basically on the machines racing the people DDoSing them, trying to implement IP tables rules while like his shell kept freezing. And yeah, so that was interesting. But that's when uh, the spawn from Snort came in handy. Right. Because you can see the IP addresses. That they were so we started like banning IP addresses based on what we saw in Splunk and Snort and uh, implementing connection limits and stuff like that. Did you guys ban whole ranges or just in the We weren't allowed to ban whole ranges that, yeah. because like you can ban the scoring engine and lose tons of points that way. And like they basically <laughs> we said, figuring out where the red team was, we could ban them. So they said no banning whole yeah. subnets. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, like the captain mm -hmm. thing that I was at, they were like, you can't ban whole subnets. And yeah, people were super serious at that too. People on the other teams, they were like asking, like they were like, are they going to physically social engineer us? Can we like push people out of our room? And I, I was cracking up. And then the guy was like, no, it's okay, don't worry. And um, so yeah, gonna punch us. <laughs> so I was being captain. That was interesting. So I pretty much just walked around and. Get, like organize what people were doing and just helped with whatever I could. I helped a lot with, I like reviewed policies and did a lot with that and then just, yeah, so that was really interesting actually for me because I got to see everything and learn a lot doing that, so that was pretty fun. And you already had like a bunch of big papers at the end. Sure, I didn't do much. Yeah, do you want to talk about what you did? So that was me and then um, I guess one of the biggest injects we had to do near the end was a whole security assessment of everything we had done and a PowerPoint explained what we had done they made it seem like we were going to have to present this. They were like, have it ready to present at four. The composition at, competition ended at five. So we were like, oh, God, we have to present it. And then they were like, never mind. You don't have to train until five. So then we were like, oh, God, we're going to have to stay for an extra hour and ten minutes after the competition ends to watch everyone present. But that didn't happen either. So now we have a nice PowerPoint to present to you, which I'm sure was the goal of that inject. So I guess after Jaron talks, I'll show that. Because that basically shows everything we did to secure our systems. And I think that will be a good wrapping up point. Um, so mainly, I didn't know too much coming in, but I learned a lot coming out. Um, I tried take care, care, taking care of the web front, but I'm a WordPress guy, not a Drupal guy. So I didn't. I tried implementing as much as I knew. Um, it was interesting. <laughs> um, I did some of the Windows Server stuff, so I helped set up. Uh, actually, I think we shut it down. IIS. Um, yeah, yeah. With Brian, so I was doing <laughs> boost stuff all day with Brian. So that was interesting. One of the uh, best things on our, so the change logs okay, that we I'll had to that. keep. Hold on. <laughs> keep talking, Jaron. Um, what else did I do? I don't know. I watched some of the snort stuff. Um, mainly I was just running around helping people. Um, I had a lot of fun and learned a lot. 
but coming in, didn't know much, so that was it was a unique experience for me. What percentage of the injects did you guys complete? All of them. Oh, All of them. The only one we like failed one. was the FTP one. No, and the banner. The banner. Yeah, no, we did that. It was just we really didn't complete that one on time, so we probably didn't get any points for it. We completed it the next day when we had nothing to do for like the last hour. Because we turned in our PowerPoint. We were done with our PowerPoint 15 minutes before we were due. And that was 30 minutes before they told us it could be turned in late. So we and just that, had nothing to do for the last hour. So we did all the injects we didn't know how to do before and figured them out. So that's when we did the banners, even though that was a day one <laughs> inject. Anyway, what machine was that on? It was on this one. Right. Oh, yeah, there it is. 927, install IIS. 1030, <laughs> remove IIS. That was one of the best. We thought we needed it for WSUS. But then we realized we didn't. <laughs> so that was pretty funny. So installing the WSUS is super confusing because what's what's WSUS? It's oh, the it's Windows, Windows Server update. Okay. Server. What? And what's the advantage of having a local Windows update? Server? Because the internet there was super slow, um, so like it would take forever. And then you can like, if you set up WSUS on all your machines, then you can standardize the updates between all of them and make sure they're all updated to the same. Level like so that it links with Active Directories basically, so it updates all the machines from. So the server. the idea for WSUS, especially having an internal an internal one, is that you have this main server that that uh, centralizes all the updates that you get, that the company wants, and then all the other machines just took up to that. So you don't have to go around to each machine and specify all the updates you want. You can just do it on that internal machine. Um, but when you're setting it up, it there's like a nice wizard for it that walks you through everything, like the configuration <laughs> steps. But it walks you through how to set your machine up as a server and not as a client. So that was one of the biggest issues. Is I, I was trying to configure the machine as a server instead of a client machine. <laughs> so some other things I want to talk about real quick was going into competition, we were all just having fun. Like every time you get in the room, they're like, oh, you're the only team smiling. I got that. Yeah. And so we were basically like just going in and if you're yeah, Andy, do you have that picture of our whiteboard? Uh, I do. But I, it's on my um, phone. I'll just email it to myself. Hold on. Okay, <laughs> well, Skylar will show that. But basically like we were having fun while doing it. And like the first day we thought we were in dead last. And they were like, we were see you in first. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Hey, they're like, we're gonna tell you who's in first. They're like, see you, and then four Hayes. And we were like, we all just like looked at each other, we were like, is the list upside down? <laughs> So, like, going into competition, just make sure to have fun and just, like, go in with, like, an open mind. Um, I didn't know much going in, but I still went, and I had a lot of fun, and I learned a bunch. Like, when I got home, I started securing my own computer, because I was like, oh, geez. <laughs> There's some major stuff going on out there. So, yeah, don't forget to have some fun. And it's got a really good cool picture. Yeah, so this was our whiteboard at the end of the competition. Oh, my gosh, you get to see my email. Yeah, not clear. It, it, it'll get there eventually. 28,000. Yeah, I don't delete any emails. <laughs> if you have Gmail, there's no reason to. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but there is a reason to get them out of your inbox. <laughs> <laughs> no, because they're coming in. I'm, I'll get confused. <laughs> called filters. There we go. Yeah, I spelled whiteboard very correctly. Um, let's see. Just go view, view, view. Yeah. This is my awesome Android camera. Yeah, so we are, so this is our board, like, basically we mapped out all our machines we had, and I don't know how well you can see this, but we had all the machines, and they're like things, and then we changed all the passwords, so we had to write all the passwords we changed, so we got to come up with a million passwords, like Obama Santorum at pound, exclamation point, <laughs> Stamp Dodo, rabbit battery, dollar, exclamation, dollar, exclamation, yeah, llama yo mama, 19 pound, so we just, yeah, so we mapped all that out. And then, so the second day, people were starting to get a little competitive. <laughs> and so I decided to give us some motivation. So we, wrote, we are dead last on the board. <laughs> and that stayed there. Um, that was the most important part of our board. So yeah, one good thing that we did was we had all the injects listed at the top. There's not anything there but these two. But um, yeah, that's a good thing. So all the, so everyone knew like where we were and what we had to get due. So for the team next year, make sure you definitely write that stuff on the board. And this also helped a lot, having all the passwords and stuff on the board. So those are two things I definitely recommend for next year. Unless yeah. they're social engineering, where they can see them. Yeah. Right, unless they can see it, but that's probably unlikely. I feel like, well, who knows, maybe not. One of the other things also is like, you start getting three injects an hour, like that's a lot of paper. Yeah. And so 
We would just, we, like our, you couldn't see table. It was just paper, oh. jacks, stuff like that. So like, keep organized, you know, like put old injects somewhere, put new injects We did somewhere. have the smallest room in our defense. Yeah, like, our room was, was like three times smaller than everyone else's. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty hilarious. We need to bring a printer next time. Oh, yeah, bring a printer. Yeah, bring yeah. a printer. Yeah. Yeah. The, the printer was like five, a five minute walk away from the room. Yeah, and, so and you had to print a thing. ton of stuff. So yeah. the Air Force brought their own printer. Yeah. That's probably why they won. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess I'll just go through this PowerPoint real fast and or Brian, I'll let her do an item for it. Um, so I guess the first thing we did was system updates. Uh, for the Linux machines, that's super easy. We, at, we just got all the updates. We set up a cron job to do it on a daily and weekly basis, even though we wouldn't be there for that. Like it was, they would be impressed by that. But then we never got to tell them that because we never showed the PowerPoint. So it didn't matter. And then we used WSUS to do the Windows machines. Um, so always the, whenever you're coming into the new systems, I think the best thing to do is always do an audit, like especially on passwords and services, and then do the updates. Because they gave us all the passwords, and every password was like Maestro Games. Yeah. Or Maestro or Games. And so, don't let PHP injects on your forum. Like, just yeah. don't let that happen. So I don't know why we didn't this slide. <laughs> so this was, this was one of the first things we did, because they gave us all the user passwords. And through AD, you can see kind of user passwords. Um, but yeah, like I, I think one of the things that the red team did was they cracked some passwords, right? Not ours. No, but for the other teams? Yeah. Right, so if you just leave, like, all the passwords were Maestro Games, which is the name of the company, right? So it's not very hard to just guess. So, yeah, go through. You saw our passwords. They were just, like, random strings of characters with upper, lowercase, numbers, symbols, stuff like that. That would be the first thing. And this is an interesting thing Brent brought up, which you guys could do legitimately next year and get points for if you told them you did it, which is on this Pam Cracklib module on Unix systems, which enforces a specific password policy so you can set minimum like what kind of like things it has to contain. So that any so you could say that any new users who would be making accounts on the company machines would have to follow the password policy guaranteed. So if they give you a password policy inject, you could mention that and do it. And they like that. Basically, you can say anything to them at any time that you do or that you want to do, but even if it's not related to injects, and we started doing that a bunch later in the competition, like when we got hacked, we'd be like, hey, this user has admin access, we want to bump them down and delete them completely. Then I'd like bring it over to the CEO and he'd be like, bruh, 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 delete the user. And then I'd be like, okay. Or he'd be like, I don't know what you're talking about. And then it was, yeah, no comment. Uh, so user audit. So. Um, this was one of the injects we did. We just turned it into a slide. This was a big deal because they gave us a list of terminated users, like Brian was talking about. So we had to remove the old <coughs> users. We um, checked user permissions to make sure they couldn't um, sudo if they or sud sudo, the correct pronunciation, or sudo as I like to say. Um, we checked this via the NC sudoers file, and we just made sure that they couldn't sudo if they. Um, this is one of the to. things that Active Directory is actually really good at is organizing all your users. So if you guys ever get a chance to play with it, there's just a bunch of folders where like it's like old IT, new IT, HR, just very organized structure. So you can go through all of them, see see which users are present, and then you can literally just right click and select delete or disable. So once once Active Directory is set up, it's pretty good at managing that type of stuff. This was one of the biggest things we did that wasn't required. Okay, so do you guys have two different user databases then? You had the AD? The latest databases had a, were individual to the computers. They weren't even. Yeah. So how, what about, So your client machines were all Windows or Mac machines, right? The like work machines, yeah. They were window, two Windows. And then your Windows servers were Linux. So right. how did you, did you have a unified login across the Mac machines? Yes. Using yes. Active, they were using Active Directory? No, they just were set up as unified across the machines and they gave us the password. But if you changed it on one machine, you'd have to manually change it on all of them. They right. weren't, there was no centralized server. Right. And we also, so they gave us Backtrack CDs, so we had Backtrack. We dual booted Backtrack on one of the machines and we live booted it on another. That's a good thing to have. You definitely want to have Backtrack up on some machines because that helped us a ton. That's how Tony set up Nessus, stuff like that. So, and yeah, and definitely use Nessus, set up Nessus on your machines for sure because that helps you see more abilities. Anyway. So first day, one when we really didn't have anything to do for a little while, Brent was like, hey, look at all this unnecessary stuff running on all these machines. There was like cups, which is a printing daemon. There was um, 
port mapper, RPC, IIS, stuff that didn't need to be running on the machine. So we started shutting all of that down. RPC especially. Yeah. And so the <laughs> service is removed because they're, that's remote. Yeah, remote, remote desktop. Call. Yeah, yeah. So that lets you send remote procedure calls procedure. to the machine. Yeah. And like there was like remote desktop running on some machines. You want to make sure that's not running, stuff like that. Anyway, so they presented present potential vulnerability risks. So we removed them. They never told us to do that, but we definitely did it. I had confirmed with them that it wouldn't like make us lose points, and it, they said no, just like keep the necessary services up. So definitely do that. Going right in, away. Yeah, going into the uh, competition, so this was the first time we any of us had ever done it, so we weren't quite sure what to expect. Now that we, we've seen it, I, I would say go into it and just do everything you can to, keep, to secure it. Like don't wait for injects to come to say, hey, our FTP server looks vulnerable. You should secure it. Like just do it right away, write a report of it and submit it. Yeah, and just say, hey look, I found this vulnerability, check yeah. this out. So you could submit reports that weren't in response right. to Right, so when we moved the MySQL database to a local facing uh, thing instead of our facing, we brought them a report and then I showed it to the CEO. He was like, really? I was like, yeah. He's like, how'd you do that? I was like, you just change where it's allowed to go to. And he's like, oh, that's cool. And then, yeah, so I guess they were super impressed by that. Uh -huh. Go ahead, let's talk about this one. Uh, so this was just changing passwords. This is another thing that AD is really good at because um, it's just right click, reset password, and then you type in a new password for the user. Um, on the Linux machines, to do it, there's the password. Yeah, PAS. Yeah. So there's the password utility that you can use, or you can just go in. I guess. I guess that's the best way to that's, do it. Yeah, it's yeah. the best way. Just use password. Um, yeah, and then another <laughs> thing we did, I guess, was on the web interface, the administrators there had insecure passwords, so we changed those. We modified our PHP as much as we know how to prevent scripting attacks, but that didn't work that well, I guess, because they still got into PHP injection. Um, this, was, this was the big thing. This is what allowed the Drupal um, attack to happen. Because none of us had worked with Drupal, we didn't know like how to update it or how out of date right. it we was or how to patch stuff. it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, just be familiar with this stuff. Or you're allowed internet access, so you can Google <laughs> stuff. Just make sure everything's up to date. If there's any patches you can apply, just do it right away. Don't, so the, don't rely on internet though, because it was down. Yeah, the, first the internet was down for about the first day. <laughs> so the next thing we did was. Um, Let's see. So we used Nessus on our machines. That was a good thing to do. Definitely a good thing to remember. Um, blacklisted IPs that were denial of service and distributed denial of service attacking us. Um, we used Nikto as well. That's a web vulnerability scanner to run on the website. And Nmap for port scanning to check open services. If you guys haven't played with these, they're just good tools. You can run them on your own machines and right. kind of see what's up. Yeah, but don't use Nmap on the school network. Yeah. They get mad, even <laughs> though they've never gotten mad at me. Um, <laughs> Uh, we also um, used IP tables rules like Tony talked about, so that's that. I think uh, one of the main things going off of the firewalls is all of our firewall rules were applied on the actual servers instead of on the firewall because, like Landon was saying, none of us knew how to configure it. So that would definitely be something to look into next year. It was a, so it was like a hardware physical Cisco firewall? Yeah, there was a Cisco physical firewall, firewall yeah, yeah. but none of us knew how to use it, so it was no, pretty useless. Yeah, it was. took them forever to give us access, and then literally yeah, I logged right. in, typed ls, it was like command not recognized, but I typed help, they were like telling commands, I read them, I didn't understand the any of them, and was, I exited. It was running on SSH1, wasn't it? Yeah, and it was running on SSH1, which they messed up apparently, because they had no idea that was the case. Uh, this is the SQL thing I talked about already. Oh, so they made us give them two security recommendations. Um, so one was that we should update Drupal. They made us estimate the cost, which I made Brent do because he's been in the industry for a long time. And we had twenty-five thousand dollars, so we said this was twelve thousand uh, dollars, and this is thirteen thousand dollars for us. So. This is an interesting concept, which you should remember if you need to make recommendations, which is that um, you should back up the DNS and the web server and then do load sharing on the web server to prevent uh, denial of service attacks. So, One of the things with backing up is if you, when you back up, you want to make sure of two things. The first is that you didn't back up a pwned database. So if you realize that you got pwned and then you back it up, it's no good because you don't know if oh. the information has been changed. Yeah. And the other thing is you always want to back up a good database onto a external drive. 
because if your machine gets pwned, then they can just get into your right. backed up stuff right. and or change it. Or one of the client machines even with yeah. the two. So you just want to make sure that when you're backing stuff up, the backup is completely secure and completely trustworthy. And that's another thing you should do right away. So we didn't do that. Yeah. We did. We backed up the SQL database on the second day, and we were just lucky they hadn't done anything to it yet. But um, you should, the, that should be another one of the first things you do is get someone to just back up the SQL database, back up any like stuff that anything can be backed you have. up. Because yeah. like they literally just deleted all our users in, through the web interface, and like if we didn't have the SQL database, we probably would have lost a lot of points. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. That was the whole presentation. It's this. I don't know what any of this is, but this is all. I mean, yeah, you'll have access to all this if you're. Um, Are we gonna? There next. Is year. that? Uh, is the CCDC stuff available to everybody? Uh, no. It's right. locked down. But it can be available now. to the team next year. Like this PowerPoint yeah. would probably be good. Uh, I mean, I can. I'll, I'll email out your PowerPoint. I wasn't going to release the rest of it. I right. mean, if people want to see it, let me know. Yeah. Um, you had to write Inject as well. This was their version of write a good oh, yeah. test question for this exam. <laughs> so we wrote, we had to write Inject, Landon wrote them. Just in case we get hacked by jerks that delete our data from our website, we would like our SQL database to be backed up immediately. So stuff like that. I don't know. You might have to do that. So be thinking about that. So how many of you guys are young enough to do this again next year? In spring, right? Yeah, it would be this time next yeah, year. I could maybe. I don't know I'll if I'll be, be taking classes sure. in spring or not. Yeah, okay. So um, maybe like four. So will I mean this will all go to sleep for a little while. So the way it works is it's a hierarchical competition. This was the regional round. It, had we won, Air Force won. We came in second out of eight. Had we won, we would have advanced to the national round, which is in Texas this year so uh, in mid-April, I think. So it's actually a two-round competition. We mm -hmm. won't go past the first round. But um, next year, we could. And we will try to do this round again. And hopefully, Regis has their. I mean, it worked out OK, but it was clearly their first time doing it. That's yeah. really distracting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, does anybody have any questions for any of us, or just questions in general? So were these all schools from Colorado? No, there were two from Kansas, uh, one from New Mexico, and four from Colorado. Yeah, so it's a regional tournament, so. Yeah. And yeah, it's, we're in the Rocky Mountain region, states, so yeah. it's, states. and next year Wyoming will come on board. Right. So it's Utah Wyoming, Utah, yeah. it's Wyoming, yeah, Utah. Like they they don't care. Yeah, I mean, why, not why, why would you arbitrarily assume Utah? Because Utah's got an awesome school. They have a fully running Ubuntu server, and we don't. Come on. <laughs> that that is higher school, they have money. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. That's what I meant to say. I think we have one or two of those. Somewhere on campus. All right. Any other questions? All right. Thanks a lot, guys. So before everyone busts out of here, like I said, a few organizational items. Um, I mean, I guess also you can find me afterwards or shoot me an email too, but is there anyone that knows they want to present something between now and the end of the semester? Yeah. What do you want to do? I want to do the uh, cafe log bit. Okay. But I have my thesis due, so it'll be later. Later. Like okay. the April too. I might do social engineering or metasploit or those USB things I told you about today. Okay, but this would be both like late in the semester, right? Like maybe I could maybe do it after spring break, but definitely not before spring break. Okay, so unless two people are representing anyone else, anyone else has something they are dying to see. I'd like to see Google happen personally. Oh, I could do some of that. Landon and I could do some of that. Yeah, yeah for sure. sure. <laughs> some what? Some like Chrome app? No. Uh, like, do you mean like finding HT access pages using yeah, Google search like that? Search that. Okay. Um, I mean, seeing Chrome apps talk about that. Okay. There's like offensive security repository for Google Hacks. Well, we could, crypt, crypto probably wouldn't do a bad thing to do. It also can get really technical. Really I can do it. Did uh, we want to do the last thing to us? Um, oh. <laughs> we'll think about it. Okay, well that gives us some ideas. Do people want to have another meeting before spring break? So is it not next week, but the week after? Do we have something, something interesting to be added? I would be down. Do people want to have a meeting and watch Hackers before spring break? Yes. 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 <laughs> Who here has not seen the Angelina Jolie 1990s Hackers movie? Yes. We watch it. That sounds like a good yes. that, Let's that just do that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Maybe we'll have like a. Do people, 
If we did this the Thursday right before spring break, are people like still around, or is it yeah. yeah. a week before spring break? Mm -hmm. school? No, show me. Okay. okay. Maybe we'll do that. We'll have to do a little bit on the download because it's totally illegal for me to show a video no, of the license and no license for it. Is that movie uh, still like uh, under, yes. under locks and chains? It is. I mean, all movies are right. There's, there's other issues. Of it, but, uh, okay, well, stay tuned, guys. Make sure you're on the e-list. We'll update you. We'll probably have just a play meeting that week before spring break, and then we'll get back to technical meetings after spring break. Cool. Thanks for coming. If you're interested in doing this next year, stay tuned. We'll bring it all up again. Are we good? Winter break. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to go to DEF CON.